Hello again, this is Eric Miskell, uh, publisher of EMS Now, uh, and this is the official second edition of the Eric Miskell Show here at IPC Apex in San Diego. Um, with me today, I have uh, some colleagues. I have Elliot Chev with Mitsubishi. Sumitronics. Why do I keep wanting to put you on Mitsubishi? Sumitronics. <coughs> you, I will remember, Juan Arango with Co. Young, and of course, Phil Stoughton of Scoop. Um, I want to start with you. It's interesting because you're within EMS. And if you think of the EMS industry and if you think of growth and if we think of the industry and what fuels that, you know, over the last many decades, it's always been kind of a product or a sector driven, right? So I think about whether those be servers, whether that be cell phones, whatever those were over, you know, PCs, all of those things. It seems a lot of the focus moving forward is automotive to me. I mean, there's no new apps coming out, new things that, that are out there, but the automotive sector seems to be getting more and more as more electronics get into that. Are, am I wrong here? What are you seeing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the automotive sector is growing. The automotive sector is a big contributor to the part shortage we all see because cars are becoming all electronic. Uh, every place you go in a car today is <clears throat> a small computer or other instrumentation, the HMI, the human machine interface, the con center console stuff. Uh, every place you go in a car is electronic. Mm -hmm. The exterior lighting on the car, uh, for the most part, is LED, all electronic. Uh, so all this move to electrify cars is causing growth in the industry as well as shortage of material because the suppliers can't keep up with the specialty parts that are required because they're uh, automotive grade parts and out of every production batch, you only get so many that meet that criteria, so, yeah. Definitely. One, what you're doing, we, I interviewed you before, we're talking about kind of, we talked <clears throat> about automotive, we talked about the growth in Mexico, the industry there. How are you seeing that? For us in Mexico, that's where the growth has been. Uh, automotive is very strong, and that's our leading sector. So for Co. Young, over 40% of our business is automotive. So, uh, like he said, with the, all the electronics in the boards, uh, it just it fits well with us. The other thing that we feel uh, helps to contribute is, in automotive, you get contracts for various years. So the ROI is easier to explain because you see the train coming for a long time. Yeah. So uh, yeah. where an EMS, if you, you do something today and a different thing tomorrow, they turn off the switch, you got nothing. So yeah. automotive is a lot more predictable. Yeah, and I think it's an interesting sector. Before we go on, because we got some industry experts, I just wonder, does anybody know who this good looking guy is that I've seen here? I, I have not seen him around the show. <laughs> But seriously, on the automotive side, I was at CES before this and then was in touch with what was going on at the Detroit Motor Show. Um, CES is becoming an automotive event and Detroit is becoming a technology event as well. Major launches of technology, bite on with their uh, basically smart device on wheels, a 48 inch screen and touchscreen control in a car. And that's a production model. That's not just, that's not just a prototype. So that's creating all kinds of different demands and all kinds of challenges for the supply chain, challenges for inspection, challenges for manufacturing. It's a really, it's an exciting space to be in right now. And I, I kind of wonder whether that is maybe driving a lot of your R&D demand and your demand in terms of having that high level of accuracy, high level of um, traceability that people are demanding and then that's just that just benefits all the other sectors so uh, for us that demand technology wise not so much on the automotive side they do a lot of electronics but typically they are probably one step behind in the miniaturization mm -hmm. and the complexity and now with the uh, a lot more of electronics in it it's catching up but historically automotive wasn't the uh, you know the frontier uh, mm -hmm. leading uh, in the small the cell phone is usually the one that uh, likes the miniaturization yeah. you can you can put so much in such small space yeah and that smartphone technology is part of what's ending up correct ending up in the same space so even if it's not naturally 
miniaturized to fit in a cell phone. It's miniaturized because it's it's part of the technology. A lot of this is happening in Mexico as well, isn't it? The the automotive sector in in Mexico seems to be moving pretty nicely. Yeah, it's it's really big in, in the Bahio area of Mexico. Uh, you'll find all the automotive suppliers, Bosch, Continental. Um, it's those kinds of companies. They're all over uh, Central Mexico. San Luis Petosi has all these companies uh, supplying because the car manufacturers are building manufacturing plants there. So, you know, you have Volkswagen and Mazda and or GM is there and Ford and everybody makes cars there. So closer to the end point of use, yeah. uh, which, is, which is good. Uh, a lot of the products we make here in Tijuana are, go to central Mexico. Uh, we make a lot of uh, entertainment systems, uh, HMI stuff, center console, that goes down there as well as lighting. Yeah. Uh, and so when you look at the complexity of some of the systems in a car today, uh, they're quite amazing. Yeah. That how they, they and they all can interface, not all of them, but a lot of them interface with your cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, it's that CarPlay uh, thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're sitting in your car and you get a text message and the car just reads it to you. Yeah. Do you want to answer it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so uh, every year there's just more and more in the car. Yeah. And there's another part of the car that's electrified. Yeah. So another computer. So uh, one thing I tell everybody, if you buy a new car today and you want to keep it beyond the warranty, get an extended warranty. Yeah. It's all electronic. Yeah, and that's where that's where you're going to get the you're going to get the failures. I'm curious how much that trade that you're doing is is impacted by tariffs and NAFTA agreement and the replacement of NAFTA and, and what impact that's having on on you and your customers and whether it's causing any shift in demand. So, okay, so we're a maquilador and we operate under NAFTA rules, which are still the rules, and. Therefore, we bring all our material in that we buy most direct from the manufacturers. And it comes in in bond. So it comes into Long Beach primarily, and it moves directly to our warehouse, to our factory. It becomes another product made in Mexico and gets brought back into the U.S. or gets transferred internally to Mexico, uh, and all that paperwork goes with it, goes into the car, comes back is made in Mexico. Yeah. So the tariffs don't affect us um, in our situation. Yeah. Obviously, if we had a factory here in San Diego, where we are at the show, yeah. we'd be paying tariffs. Yeah, it would be a big, big So impact. because of that situation, we're, uh, we're in a good position. Uh, and we've you know, been contacted by people who are suffering from the tariffs to do their work. Okay. So we can save yeah. some money. So the tariffs are maybe creating an opportunity. Mexico is amazing, amazing for Koyang. Every time I'm down there, I see more and more Koyang equipment. You're pretty much selling a machine a day these days, and plenty of them are going to Mexico. Uh, uh, Mexico uh, this last year was um, not quite 55%, but very close. In the past, they were usually about 48 So uh, a lot of the... Uh, work from China is moving to Mexico and automotive has always been strong there but now we're we're getting uh, companies that left Mexico coming back to Mexico so uh, it's very uh, competitive and in Mexico they have a lot of talent well-educated engineers that uh, can pr can provide a very uh, high-end product yeah, Mexico's really stepped up, hasn't it, Eric? You're seeing much more innovation there. Oh, absolutely. Way better technology. Yeah. And it's, it's always been a great place to manufacture. Oh, it has been for years. I mean, since everything shifted to, to China all that time ago, right, Mexico did a great job of sustaining it, keeping it stable, having for a lot of good things. What I wanted to check with you, too, be, with the time we have left is... What else are you noticing at the show? You gentlemen, you've been on the show today. You've, uh, you're going, are there any themes or anything str that stands out to you? Is there anything that you guys are noticing that's particularly positive or unique or missing even? So what I've noticed is we've been talking about Industry 4.0 for a long time. And this year they have lines upstairs that are communicating and all different vendors. It's not just one. 
So we're getting close to realizing what we've been talking yeah. for several years that uh, some people call it touchless line or a, a zero person line. Yeah. It's basically you don't want human intervention if you don't need it. So uh, the communication among all the companies is now a reality because we only play in one space, but we have to play nice with everybody else or we, get, we can't play. Yeah, that sense of collaboration, I think, is something that I've noticed a lot and that foundation of CFA. How does, how does that yeah, impact so you? Uh, you're the EMS, you have all this going on. A lot of this right. is being developed for the benefit of you guys. So I think maybe we're a little unique is that for the past 10 years, we've been running a fully integrated factory because all our equipment talks to me. We have our own software that we run our factory with. And everything talks to everything. We know when a part comes in the door, we label it and we know where that part is until it dies. Because we know where it goes. We know where it is in the factory. We know where it got shipped. We, we can trace anything about that part. I know the operator working on the SMT line and the exact moment the parts were placed. It's to that detail. So we have had this kind of system for traceability, which kind of makes our factory attractive to people, mm -hmm. especially in automotive. Um, as an example, we had a report of a, a failure at our customer, not at the OEM in the car, but in their production line they had some failures, which is kind of odd for this part. Um, we immediately could isolate it to every part in that batch, every box in their warehouse that contained those parts so they can contain it. Yeah. So within 24 hours, it's contained. Now we can work on the problem, but without our, the system we have, we wouldn't know that. Yeah. You know, we made parts and shipped them. So um, I think that Industry 4.0, especially when it gets to the masses, we don't sell our software. It, you know, so maybe we should, but we don't. It, but it's great yeah. because these tools help you manage things yeah. in a way that we couldn't do before. Well, hopefully, hopefully, Elliot, the key of what's going on upstairs with CFX and Hermes, the outcome is when you yeah. buy your Co Young machines, the connectivity becomes pretty instantaneous and, and and much much easier. So that's. That's the, that's the finale help. for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, standardization it in helps. the communication yeah. protocol is key. Yeah. Because absolutely. we all do things a little different, yeah. but we have to talk to you know everything in the line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's really good. Okay. I, I think that's big advance. We've been talking about it four years, five years. Yeah. yeah. Time yeah, to get it done. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> past time, oh, right? Nice. So. Yeah. Or you Absolutely. got to start selling your software. So uh, they're not going to do that. Yeah. They're not going to do that. No, no, no. <laughs> that's we don't proprietary. Want to be in this software business. No, no I don't. That's the, we don't want to be in the software business. No, you don't. <laughs> Listen, we we need to wrap this, but I want to say thank you to both of you just coming, spending the end of your day, sharing you know kind of your insights and your opinions here with us, Phil. As always, thank you for Absolutely. sitting in. It's always good to get your insights from all your travel. So, gentlemen, thank you. Hopefully, we can do this again sometime. Absolutely. We look forward Thank to you. it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.